celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. A man who was not a dreamer, but who had a dream to do just what Hannah was singing. And he sang so beautifully, Hannah, because the emotion and the understanding you put behind that, when we have a dream, something larger than ourselves, it will pull us and guide us and sustain us in so many different ways. Our theme this year, and I'd like you to look at your program, is embracing the generosity of spirit. So before I talk about dreaming, I'd like us to read that affirmation that's on the front of our program. So if you have your program, great, and if you don't have one, somebody share with you right here. And if you don't really, if you can't see it, if it's too dark, just listen. So let's read it together. I live in the faith that there is a presence and power greater than I am that nurtures and supports me in ways I could not even imagine. I heard Hannah singing, and it so reminded me of that affirmation. I thought it would be perfect to start with that. I'd like to define what a dream is to me. A dream isn't just wishing or daydreaming or trying to manipulate the outside world to create what you want. But a dream is using the dynamic power. It's using the dynamic essence and energy we have within to use that creative potential and infinite intelligence we call God, spirit, love, light, intelligence, life, universe, whatever you call that energy, that aliveness that is the life we live. So it's even more than I have a dream. It's when we can say, I am the dream. Not meaning I'm perfect, not meaning I'm not doing anything wrong or stumbling or falling, just meaning I am making a conscious choice to increase my relationship with God. Because when it boils down to that, we are the dream. Mark Twain said, the two most important days of your life, the day you were born, and the day you remember why. Why are we here? We're here to do just what we said to make this world a better place. To increase and expand our consciousness, as Barbara said, to have this dynamic relationship with God. And our dream comes from saying, God, what is the vision for my life? Although we can't always be in the place to hold that vision, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I want to share some of the, some of the ways Ernest Holmes who is the founder of our religious science tradition, what he says about dreaming, because I think we need to regulate the con consciousness of dreaming sometimes. Anything you can dream of is not too great for you to undertake. Have you heard that before? Anything you dream of is not too great for you to undertake. And many people have grabbed that and run with it, but what they forget is the second part of this sentence. Ernest Holmes goes on to say, if it hurts no one. That's a part that's forgotten sometimes. If it hurts no one and brings happiness and good into your life. <sighs> I am the dream. Just keep saying that, I am the dream. When you align yourself with that understanding, I am the dream. And he goes on to say, which a lot of people don't understand when we say we do prayer treatment, why it's a treatment. Because there's a systematic approach to our prayer. We don't beg, beseech, bargain with a God out there. Some of us need to update our faith. We don't do that. That's not the way we teach the power of that dynamic use of this creative potential. And let me tell you what Ernest Holmes says. When we do prayer treatment, we do not wish. We know we know God is all there is. We know we are one with God. And we know whatever is the inspiration for us from the inside out is 
what we're creating here with this potential that we have. And he says, we do not pray, again, that beseeching, begging prayer. <clears throat> we announce what we know is true. We stand in that dynamic use of this potential. I am the dream. I am the dream. And we do not expect things are going to happen. We believe that it has already happened in the consciousness, in this unformed potential. We believe it's already there, and we just open the channel for it to happen. So when we know that, when we feel that inspiration on high, we just take our place inside the dream. Because, as Barbara said, we are the dream and the dreamer. And if we can take our place inside the consciousness of this unfolding potential, the evolution of life, then we can live in that and we can sustain most anything, anything. So I mentioned to you that we, um, we can't always be in that place. God, what is the highest vision for my life? Because I'll tell you what, you're going to get some big things. Some days... It's just, what is the vision for this minute? Because that's all we can handle. Life gets heavy at times. There's disappointments, frustrations. There's things that don't turn out the way we want. And sometimes when you say, God, what is the vision for just this moment? It may be just to get out of bed. And maybe you can't even do that because you just need to nurture and take care of yourself. But Dr. Tom Costa, one of the longtime ministers in religious science from Palm Desert, he said, when your life falls apart, celebrate. You get to choose. You get to choose what pieces you're going to pick up. What pieces you're going to pick up and move forward in your life. Now, when Hannah was singing, I have a dream, and it sustains me. When times are rough, when times are difficult, I still have a dream. It's that knowing that there's always something more. It's knowing that we are here to expand that relationship with God, love, goodness, generosity, peace, kindness, power, whatever it is. We're here to expand that. And when we're not in alignment with that, we need to readjust ourselves and take time to reconnect. I know um, Martin Luther King, as I said, he wasn't a dreamer. He had a dream. And he announced it loud and clear in his passionate messages, speeches, sermons. And he's most well noted for his, his talk when he was the keynote speaker on August 28, 1963, on the stairs of the Lincoln Memorial. And he was called to be the keynote speaker for the civil rights movement in Washington. His dream was about freedom and justice and man's love for one another. And in one, he said, even though we are in difficult times today, and there's many more difficult times to come. He said, I still have a dream. And if there's one thing that you and I take away from today, right there, I still have, I still have a dream. Those five words, I still have a dream. Let's me know of the consciousness of this man that did so much change for this world. He didn't have a fixed consciousness Mm, hasn't happened so far, so it's never going to happen. He had a not yet consciousness. He had a not yet consciousness. Yes, I have a dream. Has it manifested? Not yet. But it's going to because I'm part of the unfoldment, the manifesting of this dream. How many times have we put a period where God simply has a comma? In that fixed consciousness we get, the stuck mindset... We're not in the growth mindset where we're always at choice. We can use our obstacles to stop us in our tracks or to find a creative solution, how to make it better. He had a not yet consciousness. He said, I still have a dream. I dream that one day my four children 
will live in a world where they are not judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. You and I are still working on unfolding that dream. He got it going. He got it rolling. He did his part. Thank God he had that not yet consciousness where he'd keep on, keep keeping on. You know, for us, we cannot give up. We do live in a world of disappointment. Turning on the news, how do we not fall in to the troubles of what's going on? How can we just be aware so we can say, okay, what's the prayer for me today? How do we not fall into that? How do we not fall into the problems? Believe me, my life is not where I thought it would be right here, right now. But I love it. Very different than I thought I would. But because if we can let go of the dreams we thought we had and step into the dreams that are unfolding, we can live a much better, happier life. Jesus loved to speak in parables because... Parables were those, those little short stories that meet you right where you are. They give you what you need. They're layered stories. And this particular parable I had to read a couple of times to see where it meant me and what it meant for me. But I think it fits perfectly into this, I still have a dream. I still have the persistence and the courage to believe. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight. Get that part, at midnight. And say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. I have a friend of mine who has just arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And his friend answers from within, do not bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are in bed with me. Now, here are these two sides of the story, okay? It's midnight, but somebody needs bread, and somebody's already settled in, and they're friends. And Jesus said, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Well, if we are true friends, we don't always put our need over someone else's. You can see this guy's got friends that are coming over, and he wants to feed them. That's a good thing. But... Have you ever just gotten everybody to sleep in your house? Quiet, everything locked up. So, the friend didn't say, oh, well, fine, and walk away. Here's what Jesus said. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, they're friends, they should understand, they should have some openness and forgiveness with each other. At least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. For me, that means if the friend at the door says, great, I get it, you guys are asleep. Maybe if he didn't yell it and wake up the kids. But um, if he said, yeah, I understand you're asleep. When can I come back? I really want this bread for my friend. When can I come back? He didn't give up. I think the friend inside will say, come back when it's dawn. Come back a little later. Because Jesus goes on to say, Ask and it is given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. It doesn't say the first time. We forget that part. We forget that we need to keep on keeping on. We need to keep trying at things, keep working at things to make sure they make, we make them happen. You know, the best things in this world have come from people that have had the courage and the willingness to keep on keeping on. Keep on doing the hard things and not giving up. Certainly an inspiration for Martin Luther King was Abraham Lincoln. And there's not a person in this world who has more of a persistent consciousness of not giving up than Abraham Lincoln. Let me, I'm not going to read this whole list because it's way too long. I couldn't even type it in big type. Abraham Lincoln was born in poverty, and he had, to face, he had to face defeat throughout his life. He lost eight elections, failed in business twice, went bankrupt, suffered a nervous breakdown, and was bedridden for six months. And he could have quit many times, but he didn't. 
How do you th- how strong do you think his relationship to God, inspiration, was? It doesn't have to be called God, but it's that inner knowing of we're here to make things better. His family, um, as he said, was born in poverty. His family was forced out of the, the home, and Lincoln had to go to work at a young age to support them. And then his mother died. And because of the grief and everything he failed in business, he ran for state legislature and lost. And he lost his job. He wanted to lock, go to law school but couldn't get in. He borrowed money from some friend to start a business. And at the end of the year, he was bankrupt. And he spent 17 years of his life paying off that debt. He ran for state legislature again and won. He got married, but then his sweetheart died. And he had a nervous breakdown and was in bed for six months. He sought to become speaker of the legislature once he was up again and was defeated. He ran for Congress and lost. He ran for Congress again and he won. And then he went to Washington and he did a great job. But he ran for re-election, lost again. I don't know about that. That takes a lot of persistence, I'll tell you. And he went on and on. And he went and he ran to be vice president for his party. And he only got 100 votes. Here's what he said. And we know the end of the story. The path was worn and slippery. My foot slipped from under me and that knocked the other one down too. But I recovered and I said to myself, it's a slip and not a fall. Wow. So let's look, let's take this story, this parable, even to a deeper level. These loaves of bread are nourishment. They represent nourishment. And what's going to nourish your relationship with God? What is going to nourish you so you can live in that not give up, not yet attitude? Let's say the first loaf is the loaf of faith. And to me, that means awareness. Awareness of the magnificence around us. Did any of you see the sunrise this morning? Well, good, you were up as early as I was. It was a beautiful, magnificent, the colors, the glory, the wonder. I mean, we have so much to be grateful for. We have so much to be thankful for. The faith is the awareness that God is present everywhere. Everywhere. And if, there's, if we need to eat a little bit more of that bread of faith, I just invite you to be very, very aware of the gift of every moment, the gift of the sacredness of life. The second loaf of bread is the loaf of hope. Now, we don't like to say hope in science of mind and metaphysics or religious science because sometimes it, it's hoping to something out there when we know all that dynamic power is within us. But for me, the hope is the hope of not yet. There's always something more. That's what that hope that Abraham Lincoln had, the hope that Martin Luther King had, and the hope that we know that there's something better calling us forward to unite and come together. And the last loaf of bread is the bread of love. So we have faith is awareness, hope, what what did I, what was the A I did? Attitude, attitude, the not yet attitude. And love is authenticity. If you and I can remember what we are made of, the energy, the essence of love, because that's the essence of God, can that remind us that we are all here to be brothers and sisters? Martin Luther King said in one of his one of his speeches that we have because of scientific advancements we have created this world as a neighborhood we know what's going on everywhere but now we must use our morality and our spirituality to create a community 
We either live in this world as brothers and sisters, or we will die and perish together as fools. It's our choice. So, I think for each of us, in doing our part to continue this dream for our world, is to ask in any decision we make, any action we take, any relationship we have, does this decision, choice, thought, action, relationship bring me closer to God, if that's a word you like to use, closer to love, closer to being alive, closer to truth, closer to whatever it is, but does it bring me closer to that? So you and I can know that we are a grand and glorious part of fulfilling this dream. Dr. Luke, Luke, Dr. Martin Luther King ended his I Have a Dream speech with these words. And we need to add more to this, too. There will be the day when all of God's children, Catholics and Protestants, blacks and whites, Jews and Gentiles, and we can fill in the rest, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, God Almighty, we are free at last. Will you take this moment and join me in the consciousness of prayer, consciousness of the dynamic knowing and speaking the truth, that right here and right now we have everything we need to let go of all of the judgment, all of the shame, all of the guilt, all of the blame that has kept us locked or stuck in separation. Right here in this moment, <clears throat> we have everything we need to become an outpicturing of the unity of bringing together life in community and unity and create a world truly that is better and better and better. We are part of the evolving process of love. Right here in this moment, I know for each and every one of us that we stand in the power. We stand in the power that we are choosing to use that creative potential, that infinite intelligence to bring us together in a community of unity. We recognize that we are interrelated because we are all made of the same stuff. There may be different colors and different religions and different races and different expressions, but we are all God. We come from the same beating heartbeat. We have the same blood. We have the same life. And it's ours to choose how we use this to bring us closer to our oneness. That we can truly say, I am free from the things that keep us separated. And I am open and available to be used because I am the way that God knows and expresses itself. I am the way that life lives. It's in this moment, I know for each and every one of us, that we see this new world coming. A world where we do stand together hand in hand. We do allow ourselves to live in forgiveness and peace and harmony. And as we hear the beauty of this song that unites us into this vision and consciousness of oneness, I know that we can hold the vibration of this new world that is unfolding because we have chosen to consciously create and be with it. <laughs>